All right, we will go ahead and get started since time is of the essence. However, I thank you all for joining me today. And um, I know you have different options for what you could have chosen to do for this hour, but I'm happy you chose to be on this presentation. This is one of our most popular presentations, if not our most popular presentation. And the reason for that is the six slide proposal that closes every time works. And it's simple and it's practical. Uh, practical and it's repeatable. So I'm excited to go through it with you all today. Introducing you to me first. So that is me right there in the sunglasses. And that is uh, my wife and I have a miniature husky named Cody. He is the cutest pup in the world. And uh, we love to go hiking up in Westchester, New York, which is where I'm from, from Connecticut. But I live in Westchester and have lived here for quite some time. That's just north of New York City for anyone who's not familiar. Um, and my sales background, I have been in sales my entire working career. Um, from all the way through college, working retail to after college, went straight into a commission-based sales role, and then um, ended up here at KO Advantage Group. But just to give you a quick um, snapshot of my background, I spent five plus years as a regional sales manager leading sales teams in the New York tri-state area. And we were known for having great turnarounds and won multiple awards for achieving that. I also had the opportunity at my last job, Equinox, to spend four plus years leading corporate sales training at our headquarters in New York City. So in addition to passion for sales, I do have a great passion for teaching um, and leading others. And this year I had the amazing opportunity to connect with Kim Orleski, our founder, and join KO Advantage Group. We have an amazing team based out of Calgary, Alberta. I am the first US-based sales representative, so I am honored in that regard, holding down the entire fort here in the uh, United States. Uh, so please don't hold that against me. However, uh, I, I, I am definitely uh, feeling like an honorary Canadian being a part of Kim's team as well. Who are we? For those of you that are not familiar, we are the we are KO Advantage Group, and we focus on providing relief, focus on providing empowerment to entrepreneurs and small business owners. What we provide in our training is a sales process built on connecting clients, connecting you with clients, using emotional intelligence to close high value deals faster, to close high value deals in a repeatable, consistent way. Now you can sleep when you have that predictability, when you have the revenue coming in and not wondering, worrying where it's gonna come from, you can now rest, be your best self, focus on other ventures, focus on growing your company. With that comes the empowerment to gain the right clients, to focus on the high value clients, the ones we would be honored to work with and get out of this horrible cycle where we're focused on anybody with a pulse and a credit card. That is what we truly want to avoid. We do not want to be looking for anyone with a pulse and a credit card. We want to be selective and ultimately have less anxiety, right? I think there's definitely less anxiety in the world today. There is enough uncertainty for sure. Let's not have uncertainty around the sales and revenue coming into our business. Let's get that going. 2021 is going to be a great year. It has to be, right? <laughs> coming after 2020, uh, it's a new opportunity to now uh, maybe achieve some of the things that we want to achieve that we, um, you know, that were difficult in the past uh, eight or so months, 10 or so months. However, we're, we're strong, right? We're resilient. We're going to pull through and we're going to achieve great things in 2021. Question number one, this is the six slide proposal. When is the right time to propose? What do you think? Let me know in the chat when you think is the right time to make that proposal. And for those of you who signed on in the last couple minutes, the chat is open. Feel free to let us know where you're from. We would love to know. And also when you think is the right time to propose. Okay, Tara says, when you realize they are your ideal client. Okay, all right.
What else? What else do you think? All right, so as you think, I will go ahead and steer you in the right direction. So the right time to propose is, drum roll, when the prospect is ready to buy, not earlier. It is so easy to get caught up in the mistake of sending a proposal or a quote when it's too early. However, it needs to be at the right time or better off holding off until the the, the prospect and the potential client is ready to receive the proposal. Otherwise, it ends up just a brochure or a pitch with a price tag. The value has not been created. The emotions have not been tapped into. The ideal state has not been created. So many important things that need to happen before we make that proposal. If you look at it going from the buyer's point of view, the buyer's journey, this is a great slide to either take a snapshot of. We'll also, we'll share the slides afterwards. As you can see, we have awareness of the problem, first step. We have seeking a solution. There's going to be involving others. There's going to be the challenging of the fit. Always happens, right? It's part of the process. When we buy or are ready to make that buying decision is when we want to send that proposal. Not before. And that is from the buyer's perspective. From our perspective, this is the sales cycle that we teach. We like to align our sales process with the buyer's journey always because sales is not something you do to someone. Sales is something you do with and collaboratively through someone. I mean, uh, with and collaboratively through each other. The sales process here, there's the prospecting stage, finding that ideal buyer, yes, which is what I alluded to. That's what's gonna give you the success rate in your proposal. That's what's gonna give you hopefully part of that 80% certainty that the answer will be a yes, right? We should be already have some of that 80% carved out just in the fact that this is our ideal buyer. Now we're carving out further in the lead qualification using BANT, budget, authority, need, especially timeline, right? Then have we created value? Have we asked those open-ended questions, those deep questions that are going to tap into the emotions? What does the person want to achieve? What are their goals? What does success look like, right? Where are they currently? How does that feel? How will it feel to be in that ideal state? Who will they be or who will their business become? Now, if we're aligned and we're ready to make a decision, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Prospect, in the next meeting, I'm going to provide you with everything you need to make a decision to move forward and take action. How does that sound? Yes. Awesome. We have the buy-in. We move into the proposal opportunity with 80% certainty that the answer will be a yes. And now we know it's time. Think about this. Uh, I, we definitely preach thinking about this just like a marriage, just like an actual proposal. We, we do not, there should be no new information when we're making this proposal on either side, on either side, you know, think about it. You're asking, will you marry me? And now is not the time to say like, mm, just, so you know, I have like 40 outstanding parking tickets. I um, have really unruly pets. Um, you know, uh, I have a ton of debt and uh, I get grumpy almost every morning until I have my coffee. No, we don't want to be providing new information. We should know. We should be ready to ask and get that yes. Let's talk about what a proposal is not. Lots of misconceptions here. Proposal is not a scope of the work. Proposal is not a letter of intention. It is not a contract or any other lengthy word document that the client or our reader is unable to breeze through. We want to save these things for after the proposal, for the contract stage, for the negotiation stage. The proposal, as we'll speak about shortly, should be simple, should be clear, concise, powerful. The proposal is a selling document. It is our final selling document. And ultimately, it is an overview of the journey we've gone on with the customer up to this point, as well as an overview of the journey we are going to go on, at least in the short term, with this customer, with this new relationship. It is going to summarize the goals that we've spoken about and is going to help visualize how we're going to bridge that gap. 
it is especially going to focus on destination versus transportation. We're going to focus on where we're taking our clients, not how we're going to get there. Airlines are a perfect example in vacations, right? They focus us on the destination. Where are we going? What's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? That sense, you know, right now, uh, it may be where you are, especially it sounds like it's very snowy, right? Up in, up in Edmonton, up in, in, in Canada. Here today, it's, it's warmer, but it's, you know, the rain is falling. We know winter is coming. That is not, you know, where we really want to be. How many of us are dying to travel after so much time with restrictions, with quarantines, and we think instead about, you know, the white sand beaches, Jamaica, Cancun, Montego Bay, having a cold cerveza or a cold margarita in our hand, the wind blowing, the warm wind blowing on our face instead of the frost or the drizzle or the snow. Oh, that is what we're focused on. We're not focused on what it's gonna take to actually get there. We're not focused on the, the, the ride to the airport that may or may not have 45 minutes of additional traffic, especially happens here in JFK where I fly out of. We're not focused on waiting in security for X amount of time, taking our shoes off, going through a body scanner, putting all of our belts and, and our wallets and our uh, co collections back together as we then go to just wait in line to board a plane, get called on like a cattle car, squeeze into a seat, go on a long flight, not have much room to stretch our legs. You know, ultimately that is not you know, that is just what we're doing to get to where we want to go. And if we, fo if the airlines and the transportation industry focused on that, it would sell a lot less vacations, a lot less trips. Same thing with us in our products and our services. We want to focus on the end destination, the Cancun, the white sand beach, and how it will feel to be there, not the vehicle and the experience in getting there. So here it is the proposal structure in all of its simple glory. And that is the beauty of it. This is meant to be simple for a reason. A confused mind is not a buying mind. Something one of my mentors taught me and I have taken to this day. A confused mind is not a buying mind. There are six steps to this proposal. Number one, the overarching goals. Why is this important? Do you even know where that prospect wants to be in two years, three years, five years? If you don't, then why, why are we talking? Why are we going on this journey together? Yes, you could solve a pain. Yes, you could help me get a little further, but every, every step I take to go a little further is a step towards a larger mountain that I'm trying to scale or a vista or a place that I want to be. We want to let the prospect know we are aligned, we are supportive. That is how we create rapport to now launch into the rest of our proposal by saying, yes, I recognize where you want to go and where you want to be. And now we have framed and wrapped our proposal in the rest of what we're going to talk about in, in the goal, the end goal as, a, as part of that process. Number two current state and consequences, right? So we're going into the future, farther into the future. Now we're going to talk about where we are now, right? If you, if you uh, want to take someone where you want to go, meet them where they are is the quote, right? The journey of a thousand steps start, uh, the journey of a thousand miles starts with one single step. We have to talk about the current state and the consequences. We'll talk more about how we, how we gather that information. The ideal state now, the ideal state is where does this prospect want to be? after working with us. So that is different from the goals. Now the goals, this is important to note, the goals are irrelevant to us, the service we provide and where we believe we will help the prospect go. The goals are if we never existed, where does this person, where does this business, where do they want to go anyway? Where are they going? Their mind is set. This is what they want. The ideal state is now we're gonna start working together and in three to six months, here's how things will change for the better. And more importantly, here's how it will feel. Four, product or service and how it will support. It is now at this point that we are going to talk about what we are providing. 
However, we are focusing still more on the solutions and the destination than we are the transportation. Timeline. Timeline is next. Timeline is our closing slide. Many people make the mistake and wonder why they're not closing stronger, why they're not creating urgency or getting that buy-in to move and take action. The timeline is what will help you achieve that. And finally, last, the client investment with the ROI. Client investment not to be provided on its own, not to be provided without the framing of the return on the investment for the person investing. Think about this proposal. We have a six, a clear six steps, but it is framed and wrapped into the overarching goals of where that prospect wants to be in the long run, as well as the immediate or direct tangible investment for investing in this vehicle. Our proposal should have a very compelling opening slide. We want to summarize what it is we're going to provide for that client. This is where we go back to something like our elevator pitch, or this is where we go to something like our value proposition. But of course, it should be specifically tailored to the conversation we've had. And again, the solution we're going to provide to them. Think ideal state for this one. Less about the goals and more about the ideal state. Because right, the goals are irrelevant to whether we work with them. The ideal state is where we'll be three to six months from now, maybe 12 months from now, depending on the product or service, or 30 days from now. Where we will be though, premium solutions for every client every time. That is quite vague. However, you can make yours compelling based on the person or group of people you're working with. Something else to consider is putting their logo on the opening slide as well. People love to see that. They love to see their logo. They love to see their brand. This is setting the tone now for a partnership. Think, think big, right? The identity of your company is at stake here, right? It's going to be enhanced in some way. Even if it's not on the outside, inner efficiencies will lead to outer success. So starting with the goals, again, we're setting the stage for the entire vision the prospect has for their company. Our product and service aside, what does the prospect want to achieve? What is the 30,000 foot view? Are they taking their company public? Maybe not. Are they, are they going to get their company at a certain valuation where now they can sell it? Are they wanting to, you know, in, in two years have like a, robo a robust team to replace themselves so they can focus on other ventures? Is it uh, maybe they want to be a $50 million company for the first time, or maybe a $1 million company for the first time? Now the goals, again, are long-term and also should be something you can measure. We're gonna save the warm and fuzzy feelings for where we'll be after we, when we're, when the client is experiencing our product and service, we're going to save that more for the ideal state. The goals should be a little bit more quantifiable. I ask you to write down, write down this question. And if it's not something you've considered recently, or even better, if you're planning to make a proposal in the next 30 days and have someone in mind, think about this question. What are your client's overall goals? If you're not asking these questions, start asking them and adding them to your sales conversations. That is one of the beauties of the sales of the six step proposal. Because in addition to being a really simple, compelling way to make that proposal, it's a roadmap. If you can fill in all these blanks and you have all the information, now you know it's time to propose, but you also know that you're going to be effective when you do it. If there's something missing, if you don't know their goals, we're, oh my gosh, we spoke so much about short term. I don't know where they want to be. It might not be time to propose yet. We might have to work that work backwards, get these questions answered, or if anything, make sure we're adding them to future conversations. What are your overall goals? Where do you want to be in three years? Where do you see yourself and your business going? Slide two is now the ideal state and current challenges. Now we're talking about where the client is currently at. We're talking about winter apocalypse. We're talking about, you know, the snowy stuck inside season. 
where no one wants to be. What is not only the feeling of, of where they're at, but what is the consequence and the opportunity cost if we stay here, right? If I really need a vacation and I don't go on vacation again and again and again, and time goes by and times goes by, guess what? I'm in a worse place. I, you know, this starts to add up. And the same thing is for business. Yes, there is a um, consequence to not solving a problem at the moment, but then it, what happens if this problem continues? What happens if we continue to bleed, if we continue to bleed cash flow, if we continue to bleed, you know, to not make those revenue targets? What happens if we continue to have a process that is highly inefficient, wasting time, wasting energy, wasting resources? What happens if our people are turning over and we don't know why? How expensive will that be if that continues for another year? This is where we really start to create value. And hopefully early in the process, we've asked those questions to now in the proposal, bring that back into the conversation. Where will we be six months from now if we don't change? We can use quotes, we can use examples, we can use industry statistics. However, this, this is information that should be gathered from the client and the questions that we asked, the questions that we asked in the value creation stage. The ideal state, we're back now to where we will be in the shorter term when we work together, the destination the client wants to be at when they experience your product or service. What does Cancun look like? How easy will it be to get there? Less is more, as is, is one of the spirits of this entire presentation. Ambiguity could be our friend. In a, in a little bit, we'll talk about the importance of having this be a separate meeting where you're walking the client through this presentation. That is why, because what we're doing is we're being clear, but also we're not being over detailed so we can check in. Does that make sense? Do you agree? Is there anything you'd add? What are we missing here? Because what this allows you to do is to now gain their buy-in, collect those yeses as you move through the conversation. Second question to write down and start asking. What is your client's ideal state? And more importantly, what will it feel like to be there? So much you hear about selling is about selling, you know, people buy on emotion. They justify on logic. That is 100% the case. We need to be asking not only the ideal state, but what will it feel like to be there? Never, please never leave it to your prospect to put two and two together about how they will feel after they use a product or service successfully, when they're in a better place, when they've made a positive impact and change in their life, get them feeling that now. Those feelings are what's going to propel and motivate the yes, the take action, the I'm in. Never, that is one of the, like that is please, if you take anything, do not leave it to your client to put two and two together as to the value and the emotional value that they will receive from their ideal state. Now we're talking about solutions. I believe this is slide four. Yes, goals, current state and challenges, ideal state. Now we're talking solutions. It is all the way here in the fourth slide. We're finally presenting the solutions that we can provide to bring them to that ideal state. Always present the highest, most comprehensive solution first that you truly and authentically believe will be the right fit. Do not throw out something that you know will not be the right fit. However, if you have a premium that you believe will bring the most value, start there. What are the key benefits to the product or service? Again, staying simple, mentioning three to five points, saving the details. This is in the destination transportation metaphor. We are now going to, going to start talking about what that trans transportation looks like and feels like. However, we're not just talking about a generic plane. We're not talking about it's a 747 and it's going to go, you know, with 800 miles per hour. We're, we're talking about the premium features of our plane. What sets our plane apart? What is it really going to be? Is it the reclining seats in the business class that's going to allow the, pro the prospect to feel rested 
after the trip and be able to now bring them their best selves to the ultimate destination. Again, we're going to stay simple here. However, we want to be compelling about what are those ultimate features, the reason why we are excited to work with them and the reason why we caught their attention and we're, we've now made it all the way to this step of the proposal together. Here is where it's so important to get the client to agree. Get the buy-in, especially at this slide. Because there is no point in, in providing prices or investments until the, the client or the prospect has agreed that this is the right solution. This is what we talked about. This is what I had in mind. This is what I want. This sounds good. Then we can move forward into our closing slides, which are timeline and investment. Get the buy-in here. If we're providing options, we have to be strategic. We can present one option if we're completely clear with the client before the proposal stage on what the best solution is for them. Maybe we've only talked about one solution. That is okay. Don't overcomplicate just for the sake of overcomplicating or manipulation, you know, or psychology. However, there is there are benefits to presenting two or three solutions if there is any uncertainty because you will make it easier for the client to make a decision. Better to present two options. Overall, why is because everyone loves choices. People love to choose. They want to have an option. It, compare and contrast creates a conversation. One option is yes or no, deal or no deal. Two options is, okay, now we can weigh what would be the best fit versus is there a fit, which is why presenting two or more options is kind of a sales 101. It gives, it gives us as a salesperson or a business owner the opportunity to have a conversation about what is the best fit. It also allows the prospect to feel a sense of autonomy which is the number one, uh, one of the number one drivers in terms of influence is always respecting that autonomy. Or we can present three options and we can you know, uh, present and kind of frame one option to be better than another. This happens very frequently. You know, I've, uh, I'm a big fan of history, so I'll read about you know, uh, something they often do in politics it's, uh, to world leaders is they'll, they'll present three options. You know, it's like, and, and they really only know that one of them is going to be the option. You know, we don't wanna go that far, but ultimately, again, three options can help facilitate a decision versus putting pressure on a decision. Finally, we are at our timeline slide. This is our closing slide. The client will choose to delay or buy if the timeline is vague. Again, a confused mind is a buying mind. The timeline should have been discovered during the lead qualification process. This is one of our four criteria for qualifying in BANT, budget, authority, need, timeline. So important here. One of the biggest mistakes that we see, one of the biz biggest mistakes that can be made is asking, when do you want to start? If I ask anyone, when do they want to start? What do we think the answer will be? I don't know, sometime in the future, right? <laughs> uh, that's not today's person's problem, especially if switching costs are very heavy. Think about this like fitness and losing weight, right? And who wants to start losing 10 pounds or who wants to start that diet? Nobody. The better question that we should be asking or we should have asked is, when do you want to see the results by? When do you want to have that? When do you want to be 10 pounds lighter? Not when do you want to start losing 10 pounds because now we're talking about the process of losing and no one wants to go through that arduous, difficult process. When do you want to be 10 pounds lighter? What's the answer to that? Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, six months ago. So maybe six years ago, today for sure at the latest is when I want to be 10 pounds lighter or in a business sense, you can ask, when do you want to start? When do you actually want to receive the increased revenue from this product or service being a part of your business? Not when do you want to start, 
When do you want to actually see the increased revenue? The answer will be now or shortly in the future. And it allows the prospect to now work themselves backwards and realize with a clear and compelling timeline that we need to take action today or very, very soon to get very, very soon results. Keeping the timeline simple is also important. We should have three to five checkpoints. For example, when we approve the agreement, when we'll be signing the final agreement, the final details, when will we actually start to implement? When will we be completed by? Maybe it's phase one, maybe it's the entire project. When will we, st when will we be starting phase two? Or when will they um, take that next step in terms of why they're laying this out in the first place? Question number three to write down for your notes. What will you add in your timeline? If you're not providing a timeline right now, this is something we should be adding to our proposals. Even if it is sort of basic, that is okay. We want someone to visualize what the next few, few days or a few weeks or even few months will look like working together. Giving someone a sense of certainty and security is what we want to be doing when we're making the close. The number one reason the close does not happen is because there's some type of uncertainty. And even if you're not sure that this will be the perfect ideal timeline for the client, hopefully we've asked those questions when we're presenting something we do. No is right. However, even a hypothetical timeline, this is what most people do. This is what most of my, this is what the next three months looks like for most of my clients. This is what the next three weeks typically looks like. Why is this a good way to do it? One, because it still gives that visualization of what it's going to look like to move forward. And you're incorporating social proof. If you, you know, the six laws of influence, if anyone has read Robert Cialdini's amazing books, social proof and what other people do, other people like us typically do is one of the most powerful ways to influence all of us, all of us as we influence each other. Finally, the price, the price and the return on investment. Okay, few things to recognize about the price. <sighs> Realizing first, number one, price never sounds good. That's okay, it's part of the process. We should be proud of our prices if we're offering high value services. They should be high. They should be maybe even a little shocking. That's going to be a demonstration of the value we can provide. Ultimately, it's important to recognize that price is a factor, but in most cases, it is not the factor. As they say, I once heard a quote that says, you know, some people might marry for money. Most people don't. That is exactly true in the world of sales and business. However, with our price side, we want to remember this is not the landing point, but the opening about what the client is going to invest, but more importantly, what they're going to receive for this investment. We want to never show a price tag without in relation to the return on the investment for the prospect. And it is very important to recognize it is not up to us to tell the client their ROI. Here's what you're gonna receive. Here's what we can do. Here's what you can expect. It is up to us to ask the questions and have the client tell us, what would it mean to you to have this product or service? How valuable would it be for you to have that more efficient process? These are the questions we want to be asking earlier in the sales process, especially in the value creation stage. And now we're bringing this back. This is so important because throughout the process, it's been a conversation specifically about the client and what makes them different, what makes them special, what are their exact challenges, goals, ideal states. And then, you know, at the end, suddenly we're like, all right, well, here's what we do for everyone else. But that's where you start to trip security alarms because we're not like everyone else. We're not like everyone else. It needs to be reflected back based on the questions that we've asked. Here's what you told me you would expect to receive. Here's what you told me 
your revenue would be in Q1 of 2021 if you had this problem solved. And again, so important to recognize at this stage, a budget tells us what we can afford, but it doesn't stop us from buying it. That is true for all of us. I'm sure we could all say we're guilty of buying something we didn't have in the budget or couldn't afford. That is true for businesses. That is true for professionals. Ultimately, people buy on emotion, people buy on value. We wanna be creating that compelling dream state where we're less focused on the resources that we're parting with because people are loss averse. That is another psychological trait, right? Loss aversion sets in at the very end, which is why it's so important to have the proposal set up with the goals of where this person will be in three to five, six years, the ideal state. What will that feel like? The solution we've bought in, we've agreed, yes, this is going to help bring us there. The investment is in, it's not a price, it's not a fee, it's an investment because we're going to have this amazing return. Even if it's not a life-changing return, we don't need to be making promises if they're about promises we can't keep. But of course, if we can't help the prospect make $4 for every $1 they invest, they're not going to invest that dollar. And going in for the close. We want to, at the, I mean, we've come so far, right? This is the time to now go in confidently, strongly. We can ask a close-ended question for the close, right? We've asked so many open-ended questions to gather the information. We're asking now close-ended questions as we move the proposal. Does this make sense? How does this sound? Is anything missing? Is this what we spoke about? Wouldn't that feel amazing? We've collected all these yeses. Now we can ask our close-ended question again. Are you ready? Are you ready to move forward now? Allow the space for the client to say yes. Don't be afraid of silence. Silence is our friend at this stage. We've made it so far, we can wait an extra 30 seconds. It might feel uncomfortable. Practice this, role play this. We can help you role play it as well because it is that important. It is that important to ask the question and now be silent. Think about again, a real proposal, right? We ask, will you marry me? And nothing else. We have to, now we've hung ourselves out there. We have to wait for an answer. We can't talk ourselves out of the sale. We can't say, will you marry me? And then say, I'm a really nice guy and, um, I'm going to work real hard for the family and I think I'm going to be a great father. Um, I promise I'll get along with your family. No, we don't. We can, it's easier to talk ourselves out of the sale than it is to talk ourselves into the sale. We want to ask the question. Yes, maybe we can make our eyes big and bat our eyelashes, <laughs> but no talking. One, uh, a couple of uh, big mistakes here in terms of making our proposals that we want to avoid to set us up for success. Please stop emailing the proposals. If it matters, put the care into it. The proposal is part of the sales cycle, but more importantly, it's part of, it's the first step of that journey and what it will be like to work together with that prospect. We are now going hand in hand. This is a real relationship. What kind of impression are we leaving when we send information and wait for someone to get back to us. Of course, we cannot meet as frequently in person as we used to. Zoom is our friend. Make this a Zoom meeting. Be face-to-face, -face, share your screen. That's why we recommend a PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint's more compelling. A PowerPoint is visual. A, power, a PowerPoint has stops and segments where you can present, collect buy-in, present, collect buy-in. And it forces you to be simple on a slide, right? Because otherwise, I, we all know we've looked at PowerPoints. If we're squinting, it's a you know it's a waste of time. A simple, compelling PowerPoint delivered over Zoom. If 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 you must over a over a phone call, never over email. Some final proposal tips. 
Again, we recommend, recommend PowerPoint over Word. It enables us to tell a better story. We can better use graphics. We can better visualize. Constantly test for comprehension and agreement, collecting those yeses, yes stacking all the way through to the end. Focus on the destination, not the journey. Again, don't get caught up at this stage of the details of your product or service, what it's going to be like to implement them, what it's going to be on a granular level. We still want to say stay simple and holistic here. We can talk further later on contract, maybe negotiation, maybe first stages of implementation. But what the purpose here is to get the prospect to agree that this is the solution for them and they feel confident they would receive a specific return on a specific investment. App application is not education. That is one of our number one beliefs here at KO Advantage Group. If you are planning to make a proposal, if you would like help with your proposal, please reach out to me. I would love to meet with you. Two heads are always better than one. We will make this a proposal that will close. Jenny, Jenny worked on her proposals with us. Close rate went from 20 to 30% to 70%. That is what we should be looking for. We're not talking about sales funnel today, but we should be closing 70 to 80% of our proposals that are made. If not, we need to work back into the sales process and figure out what we need to tweak or enhance to get us there. We are, again, KO Advantage Group, uh, subscription-based sales training company. However, focus on one thing. Focus on the fact that we love to meet and help entrepreneurs, business owners, sales team, and salespeople get more sales faster, close sale quicker. 20 minutes of a deep dive to help you drive more business is what I ask. Take this meeting link right here, bit.ly slash KO meeting. Book some time in both of our calendars. Let's end the year strong. Let's get your proposals up to 70 or 80% close rate. Or if you don't have anyone to propose to right now, please book a meeting. Let's, let's go ahead and you know let's jump on that now because it's going to take time, of course, like anything to generate the real results. So let's go. Let's go. It can be like magic or something. When we use the six slide proposal, when we have the goals, when we have the ideal, when we have the ideal state, when we have a clear sense of the challenges, when we have a clear sense of the return on the investment, the time when we have all these things, this is what gives and provides the amount of certainty and the amount of force for someone to say yes with confidence. There can be so much inertia, especially towards the end stages of a sales process in the close. We need a little magic. We will provide the slides. There was a lot of great information here today. If you want to take the slides and kind of cross-reference them against your own proposals, we will go ahead and follow up and send you those slides as well. I would love to know from everyone, please in the chat, what is the one thing you took away from today? Thank you for spending these 50 minutes with myself um, and our team really, because this is a team effort, this presentation. What is one thing you took away from today? What is one thing you take action on and add to your proposals or enhance your closing? Go ahead and let me know in the chat. Yes, Greg, when do you want to see these results by? Oh. That question is like when we say earlier in the slide, it could be like magic or something. That is one of those questions that feels like magic when you use it. Yes, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony, yeah, wait till they are ready to buy. Have that discipline. We're not doing ourselves or the prospect favors if we're making the proposal too early. Awesome, Tara. Yes, again though, but that's a great takeaway. When do you want to see these results by? Now, when do you want to start? Because the answer will be now. And then that person has just closed themselves. They've just decided them, they're themselves on the level of urgency. 
And yeah, Sean, I mean, absolutely. One of the most powerful ways is talk about others who have made the change for sure. Going back to that idea of social proof, right? It becomes real when you tell a story too. Like we haven't talked about stories a lot today. And that is another thing you can work into your proposal if you can do it in a concise and compelling way. Uh, but yeah, totally, right? Use the stories, work that into your return on investments. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone. Uh, go ahead and commenting. It's awesome takeaways. I look forward to uh, connecting with all of you and learning more about what you do. Let's go ahead and work together to crush it. Let's close some sales. Let's provide some value. Most importantly, let's all work together. Again, community is so important for those of you who are on the beginning of the webinar. Longevity equals community. Community equals longevity. Sales is the lifeblood for all business. Sales is our longevity, but we will achieve it together with our community. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Tony, for the kind words. Look forward to catching up soon and uh, have a great afternoon.